finished for the day. Um, I've got all my tears covered and airbrushed and I don't know why but the three of them sitting like this are giving me proper Lion King vibes like if I stack these and decorate them I could easily turn this into a Lion King cake but it is not a Lion King cake there's actually no lions on it whatsoever but there are lots of other different characters going on it so I'm going to leave these to dry and set and then I can stack them tomorrow we have just got home and I have got some baked potatoes in the oven for tea. Adam's just hoovering the hallway because we're going to put up our Christmas tree lights on the roof. So if you didn't know, in the hallway we actually have Christmas lights as our hallway lights and they've broken. They just don't work anymore. Uh, but they have been up for a couple of years. So we've got 1,025 metres of warm white lights on a clear cable. Um, that's what we've got up already, I think. I think we've got 25 metres, I tried to measure it. Um, so we're gonna pop these up now because the other ones are a bit knackered. These ones are called cluster lights as well. So it means all the bulbs are really close together on the wire because regular tree lights usually have a long wire and then a bulb and a long wire and then a bulb. Um, but these obviously illuminate the roof a lot better when they're really close together. So if you want to look for this type of Christmas tree light, I think you have to type in cluster. Done. We had a couple of meters to spare, <laughs> so this is what our roof usually looks like. And it used to end in the corner, um, and then the wire came down to plug in. But we had some extra lights, so I've put them around <laughs> the mirror. It only goes down one side; is not enough to go up the other side because they end just there, and then they're plugged in down here. It's now Tuesday and almost dinner time and I have to apologise for the less than flattering angle um, but I'm just getting on with painting the top tier um, I should hopefully get the majority of the front done before we set off to go back home for some dinner but as you can see it's all stacked um, I've airbrushed a few extra details on it and I also can't chat for too long because my battery on the camera is going to die and I need to charge you up but I'm just going in with what size of brush is this this is a number one brush um, just to get bulk of the black on and then I have my finer paintbrush I like to use um, zero or sometimes double zero to get very small details on but my favourite black paint, as usual, you know, is this one by Rainbow Dust. It does, however, as the bottle suggests, have a metallic sheen when it's dried. So you can get a little bit of a silverish look to it. But I find it's the one that doesn't smudge and doesn't run as much as other ones I've used. I don't know if you can see, I've just turned. You can kind of guess where we're going with this one. It's a super popular theme, um, but this cake is absolutely full of different themes. The couple came for the tasting the other week, um, and it was a case of, right, this is a list of things we like. They are TV, film, game, pets, things like that. Um, and then I have to try and get them to work as a design on the whole thing. So whenever somebody asks for Nightmare for Christmas, it does often manifest itself as Spiral Hill because it is such an iconic part of the movie. So as you can see, like the big bulk parts I'm filling in with this. And then when I come to actually paint Jack and Sally on top of the spiral, that's when I'll go in with my smaller paintbrush. But I just thought I'd give you a little update, but I'm going to switch you off now, get as much of this done as I can, and then I can go home 
Not only for my dinner, but I can plug my camera in for a little bit. Just gonna show you what I get up to in a typical day in terms of where you saw it at dinner time. Um, so I got the top tier finished. So I painted the rest of like Halloween town sort of silhouettes, um, like Jack's house, plenty of bats and the couple themselves and I also got around to modelling the snake which is actually going to be chasing their pet cat so all the modelling I've pretty much left until tomorrow it's mostly been scenery today so this centre tier is based around Wally and Eve on Earth and because we still have a few other bits and pieces to put on as well so these are the little trash cubes that he squashes um, and then there's the scene where there's a little lamp and they're watching the sunset or at least Wally's watching the sunset um, and there's Christmas lights involved and they also wanted their initials so this is where I, I got it in L and J kind of put like bunting slash Christmas lights um, and then the rest I haven't finished yet but there's like the little fence um, and some earth detail um, but Wally and Eve are actually going to be sat on either side and then the bottom tier is based mostly around Monsters Inc in terms of there's the, lots of doors from Monsters Inc but there's I decided to like how to get their other characters in is kind of theme the doors so we're going to have a regular Monsters Inc door on here with Gizmo this is going to be a Frank and Weenie door. We've got a regular Monsters Inc. door. We've got a Wally and Eve spaceship kind of door. So this is the plant detail. Then we've got obviously Halloween Town's door, which Jack finds in the forest on the tree. Um, and this one is going to be a Beauty and the Beast um, like castle door. I actually do have the doors already made and they're drying ready to go so this is the Beauty and the Beast one with the rose on it this is obviously Frank and Weenie if you have seen that one um, it's all in like black white and greys lots of stitch detail and then another regular Monsters Inc door which is going on the front so it's mostly about getting it stacked getting the base detail on um, and then there's lots and lots of modeling to finish off tomorrow I also got round to making their top part. This is still in progress. Um, this is the noodle box from Lost Boys. I am so chuffed I'm getting to make this. Um, I've made a few Lost Boys cakes or references to Lost Boys, but I finally get to make a noodle box as a top part. So I'm um, just letting that dry and set ready for tomorrow. But it's five o'clock now. I'm off home, going to have some tea and then possibly go out for a walk if the weather plays ball. Good morning, I have just got into the studio. It is 8am and today is the last day to get this cake finished. We had anchovy pasta for tea last night. We did go out for a walk, it was absolutely pitch black. Um, it's getting really dark really quick now. And then I went for a bath and caught up on a couple of Disney vlogs we have got really, really behind on. But that means I've done no admin because I usually do my admin on a Monday which is answering emails, catching up with cake designs um, and because this cake is a, it's leaving tomorrow which is a Thursday my schedule's kind of moved a little bit so I don't know when I'm going to get time to do my emails but it's if you leave them for a while you start getting the did you get my emails emails. <laughs> So, um, and I don't want to panic anybody, especially when it's like wedding cakes and things, you don't want to ignore them and have them panic. So <clears throat> yeah, it's just pretty difficult because when you go home, I've been really trying to be home when I'm home. So going out for the walks, having tea, having a bath and trying not to touch any work, but it's really, really, really difficult. <laughs> and I have caught myself um, coming off the computer at 9 p.m. again from doing work at home so but I just don't have time to switch my laptop on today because I know I've got to get this finished so the juggle is real <laughs>
trying my hardest to be finished with this today uh, but it's now nearly five o'clock which is home time so I've worked from eight till five today with three quarters an hour for dinner just in case it gives you an idea of how long like from where I started from to where I am now and I'm going to come back down tonight luckily there isn't too much to finish so I'll probably talk you through everything once it's done. What I have to make is a little, um, it's called Ghost from a game. He's going here. Um, I have lots of pumpkins to make and I have some scream canisters that are already made. They just need placing around the board and decorating. And then I've got a little bit of painting, like shading on different things to do. Um, Cause this lamp is looking very flat. So this will need some painting. Yeah, quick update, I'm going home for tea now um, and I'll see you again when it's finished. Spent an extra hour on it and it is now completely finished. So I'll quickly run through the details. So up top we have a topper of takeaway worms. If you've seen Lost Boys, you will know what reference this is. I've actually called the takeaway only noodles in Santa Carla. And who knew I would spend time trying to get the perfect earthworm colour. <laughs> Next to this we have Taco Cat, sat on the Nightmare Before Christmas tier, which we went for orange on this one because the theme of the wedding was actually burnt orange, autumny colours, beige, dark greens, can't remember if I've actually said that before, um, so this is why this tier is orange and not purple, um, but I think it works really well. We have the Nightmare Before Christmas snake coming around, which is chasing the pet cat. So he's trying to escape down this tier, which is Earth from Wally and Eve. Well, the film Wally, but Wally and Eve on Earth with the little trash cubes. And then down the bottom, we have Lumiere from the new Beauty and the Beast popping out of the Beast door. And um, we have Death of Rats, we have Monster Screen Canisters, we've got Gizmo, we have Frank and Weenie, we've got Sparky from Frank and Weenie popping out there. And we've got some regular doors around the back. I've actually, this wasn't even part of it, I just popped the little plants growing out there um, on the Earth tier. And we have a Wally and Eve spaceship type of door as well with a plant on. Um, around the back you'll have seen we have silhouette of Halloween Town. We have the Halloween Town door and then back around to Wally again. There's little Wally and there's Giggling Eve. But we're all done. So I am going to photograph this, box it up. Um, it was chucking it down today. So I'm hoping that I've got a box big enough that the flaps will actually shut on top because usually when I box my cakes up, um, sometimes I have the flaps open if it's a tall cake, but I kind of need them to be covered just in case it rains. But we'll see. The delivery is an hour and a half tomorrow and then an hour and a half back, so like a three hour round trip. Adam has the day off work so we can take it. Because as we all know, there is no Little Cherry Cake Company without Adam, the delivery driver. But I'm going to get that done now and then I'm off home again. Good morning. It is 7.52 a.m. on a Friday. We delivered the cake yesterday. It was actually two hours there and two hours back because there were a bit of standstill traffic. We got there on time, set it up into position. Everybody else was there. The florist setting all the flowers up things like that and um, they were all having a good look at the cake because the rest of the decor was very elegant um lots of nice flowers and roses and things like that in the gorgeous like burnt oranges and then <laughs> they were like oh i can't wait to see the cake and then because it was full of characters like oh my god is that gizmo oh my god there's wally on it um so they were having a good look came back i managed to get my admin done so um that was a good time to sit down and then do all my emails um i've got a cake drawing to do i also edited this vlog and then we went food shopping and now it's friday um so obviously i don't have a cake now until next week but i am working on rad slabs because i sold some of the rad slabs for halloween so thank you very much if you placed an order it means a heck of a lot because I know things are tough for everybody at the moment and chocolate is not high on the priority list. The chocolate is not going to pay your bills or your heating. Um, 
so it really means a lot that people have bought them if they could and there's a couple of postal strikes coming up so what i'm going to do today is get the personalized ones done because you can get personalized sprinkle stein spooky sprinkle steins so i'm going to be stamping out all the names today and making all the plaques um but i can't make them until next week ish because i need to go and get some more toppings but yeah let's get the coat off let's get some music on and we'll start the day we've just had dinner and adam has gone back to work and he's chosen my ambience for the day so this is what he chose like an autumn style campfire I am about to light my candles. I got my sugar paste stuff done and I have come back for the afternoon and brought all my dreaded receipts and things with me to do my um, accounts and get that cake drawing done. So it's an afternoon of admin for me. This weekend will probably be spent tidying up. Um, or at least Saturday will. Sunday I'm out for the day with my friends Mish and Emma who are cake makers. Um, we used to do a lot of like Cake International together. Um, like we'd all stop in the same room and share the room. We have got up to all sorts of cake adventures, really random things that we collaborated in, on in the past. Um, but I'm catching up with them on Sunday because it's been a while. I'm actually tying that in with some Christmas shopping because we're going to meet up in Bury and I have my list um, for like I tried to plan ahead and do said I'd do my Christmas shopping in October because obviously we're on holiday in November it's going to be December when we get back and that's too late for me to do my shopping so I allocated the Christmas shopping to October so not only will I get to meet up with them, but I will tick off a bit of Christmas shopping as well, hopefully. I'd love to know, are you a full-time, like, if you share a house with your partner, do you both work full-time or does only one work full-time, you work part-time or you just do cakes as a hobby or you might not even do cakes at all, you could be watching this and have nothing to do with cake because I know I have a few followers who, who are like that um, just to see the world behind the cake. Um, but I'd love to know what your, like, your dynamic is in your house of if you're both like full-time or part-time or whatever. And the reason I ask is because my house is a blooming mess and like I vlog all week so you know that I spend my days at the studio making cakes. I come home, I try to be at home. Um, we try to go for walks to get the exercise in. We're making tea, we're doing the food shopping. At what point do you get to tidy your house? At what point do you get to just run around with a duster? I would love to know because we are falling way behind and we're both, we both work full time. What I would love is if I was part time, like part time, if you could get paid for being a housewife, that would make me very happy. So I'd gladly just clean the house and get paid for it. <laughs> so that it was nice and tidy. But honestly, there's just stuff piled everywhere. The kitchen is always the worst because you make a meal, all your pans are out and stuff, or you quickly cook, like we've just had dinner now, so the dinner stuff's out there. I'm on my computer, I'm going to start doing my accounts and start doing my cake designs and stuff. So when do people clean? Please let me know in the comments. <laughs> and also, do you have any help with the cleaning or other jobs? Like we do everything we do all the cleaning all the ironing all the washing do you allocate those jobs to somebody else do you go send your stuff to a laundrette do you have somebody who does your ironing for you do you hire a cleaner please let me know i would just love to hear from other people and how it works for them because it's not currently working very well here i'm going to crack on through my job list and i will see you when i see you this has just arrived through the post i absolutely love it <laughs> Um, I know I mentioned previously I went to see Mrs Doubtfire at the theatre and the first thing we do is go to the merch stand to see if we can buy the pin for the show. Um, the pin had actually completely sold out um, and because it came from Broadway the only other place you could get the pin was from America and the postage was pretty much more than the actual pin cost because um, we know what 
postage is like. So I just had to find um, any sort of Mrs Doubtfire. This isn't the original Broadway musical pin or anything. It's just a regular Mrs Doubtfire pin. Um, but we needed something to commemorate. <laughs> So this is our board. You'll see the other musicals and things we've been to, Beauty and the Beast. This was Everybody's Talking About Jamie. And we've got one here for Hairspray. This isn't an official pin. Again, Hairspray didn't have a pin, so we bought this one. So we know what it represents. Um, this one was for six the musical. So we do have quite a few musicals pins on there. Um, where Adam went to the train museum. We have, this one is our anniversary pin. Um, 10 years which was tin so I bought a tin of biscuits this one's really cool and opens up um, we went away for our anniversary there is a whole vlog on it if you want to go and watch that but we got an Aidensfield post office pin so that was for Gothland and now we have a Mrs Doubtfire pin for the musical which I'm just going to pop there these are all in chronological order as well <laughs> which I know is very sad um but if you have been watching for a while, you will actually see like the first pin going on. And we have been collecting, I think there's about five, that's about five years worth of pins, I'm sure it is. So this was an anniversary pin, so that's one year. That's another anniversary pin, so that's two years. That one, three years. And this one, four years. Yeah, so there's like four years worth of pins there each symbolizing something that has happened or somewhere where you have visited so we've got like christmas pins these snowmen are for christmas this was the original christmas pin another christmas one here because this is gingerbread men um so yeah we've still got a whole board left i'm just wondering how many years worth we can kind of fit on um but when you look at it and think god there's four years with it we haven't really done much have we <laughs> Good morning, it is now Monday. I haven't got my makeup on this morning because I am off to the dentist again. I've still got a few more appointments ahead of me until I'm done. Today is going to be a couple of hours of an appointment, um, so it's useless putting makeup on because they're like, <laughs> here like rubbing around your mouth, so. But I did what I said I would do at the weekend. Um, yesterday we had the little shopping trip in Bury. I managed to pick up just a couple of items. Had a nice catch up with Emma and Mish. We went to Rollers for dinner. <laughs> if you have not heard of Rollers before, it's like a, it's almost like Subway, but for pizzas. So you've got all your toppings out and you can choose your different toppings and then they make like a little individual pizza that goes through a mini oven. And they do the most amazing cinnamon buns. And we sat in there for a long, long time catching up. And just had a little browse around Primark and stuff. And then when I got in from shopping, I made tea and then <laughs> I attempted to shorten one of my skirts. So I'm not gonna lie, I find this very, very difficult because it's like a full circle skirt. So there's a heck of a lot of material. So this is the skirt in question. As you can see, it's all gathered around the bottom. There's a lot of uh, material. So it was very difficult to kind of lay out and mark how much you wanted off. Because <laughs> it went round in one massive big curve. So this is all the material I cut off. Quite a lot of it. Um, I cut roughly eight centimetres-ish. Turned it up, sawed it. And I, th I think I did all right. <laughs> it's, not, it's not perfect from the inside, but at least it all, looks all right from the outside. Um, so I know for next time, especially this bit, so this is the inside of the skirt. So I'll first show you the nice, neat stitching on the outside. And then on the inside where I turned it up, um, as you can see, it didn't quite catch. So I didn't, like when I rolled it up to sew it, where I sewed, it didn't catch. <laughs> so it's caught there and then it opened up a little bit there. <laughs> But that's on the inside. Um, so I'm not too fussed about that. I'm just happy it is now a nicer length. And I, I chose the pink one because it's not my absolute favourite. I've got a green one which I really like, which is the exact same skirt. So I kind of tested it on this one first before I did the green one. But now I know what to keep my eye on to make sure I get the green one spot on. It is just a regular stitch, so it could quite easily just fall to pieces when it's been in the washer but and with all this excess material there's actually such lo long lengths of it i could make a little belt if i wanted and tie a bow at the front 
Um, so I've got some options there. But that was my first attempt and I have a whole bag here sat on the floor of skirts and things I need to take up. I also have that um, a nighty, believe it or not, um, I bought a nighty from Vinted that was somebody's unwanted gift and it's a toy story nighty with the clouds on i know you can get t-shirts but it's weird because the t-shirts are a very very dark blue and obviously the toy story clouds that we know and love are a lighter blue like if you look at andy's bedroom walls which is where the clouds come from it's a light blue with the clouds on so i found a nighty in that exact right color and it has like a little pocket detail with slinky hanging out and rex and we were looking for a Toy Story t-shirt for Kai for the holiday. Couldn't find one. I found this nighty for like £1.50 on Vinted and bought it and thought I will just sew it and cut it down into a t-shirt. So and nobody will ever know unless you own that exact nighty. So yeah, it's just stuff like that I wanted to get my sewing machine out for. Um, altering clothes, making things a bit smaller, making things a bit shorter, turning 90s into t-shirts. But I'm feeling better about that last night. It took a very, very long time. Um, probably far longer than it should have, but there was just there was just too much material. I was just like out on the floor, my legs were killing. There was just a lot of it. But I'm going to end the vlog here because I am going to edit this straight away, get it up on YouTube for Thursday and tackle the dentist today. <laughs> So we will just see how I get on today, but they really need doing because these are the temporaries still. Um, I still have my root canal number three on the same tooth to try and fix that today. That's what's happening today and it's a good three hour appointment. So wish me luck. Um, I'm going to go get ready for that and I will see you again in another vlog. Music